It has been 300 years since Kerbals first walked upon Mun. In that time, we abandoned the stars, discouraged by the false sustainability of relics like Munshot and the Alicorn program. All that changed 63 years ago. A wake-up call came in the form of a devastating asteroid impact. The crater, so large it can only be seen from orbit, serves as a reminder to any who would doubt the need to understand the universe. It was decided that the way forward was to move beyond the disposable ships of the first Age of Adventure. We don't want to merely visit space, we need to live there. This ship, the Horizon Walker, was designed to meet this mandate. It is a true ship of space. It was built in orbit. It's designed to never return to the surface of any planet. And it is designed to live as long as necessary. It has an indefinite life cycle. This is accomplished by using great modularity. Every bit of this can be refitted, repaired, swapped out if necessary, if better, if better technology or designs come along. But the ship itself will have continuity. It'll be the same ship, just with different pieces. The construction started here with the uh, propulsion module, this bit in front. That's four ion engines, a number of solar panels, and some radiothermal generators as emergency support in case all else fails. Construction then continued, let's move over here, with this, the command module, this middle bit in front. And here we have a lot of RCS fuel for maneuvering. We have a control module that seats two and a passenger bay that seats four. Next, this science module was added. This is a detachable element that can re-enter a planet's atmosphere and collect data for, for, for further study. The final element was this in the rear. This is a booster module. This is because ion engines, while very efficient, have a very weak kick, especially with a craft this large. So this is a radio, this is a nuclear nerva drive and enough fuel that should get us to our destination. We'll be stopping with the ion drives probably, but that's okay because stopping isn't quite so time intensive. Now let's see if we can't get back on board the ship. Where did I put my ladders? I said that there will be continual upgrades to the system. I think the first upgrades will always have ladders on them. I want, now that I'm doing EVA around this, I want to have ladders on everything. So I don't have this problem where I have to get in touch with the ladder facing the wrong direction and upside down. Let's climb down here and board. This particular configuration, especially this science probe here, was designed for a shakedown run. We're going to Duna. We're going to drop this probe into the atmosphere of Duna. Hopefully it will land safely and we will have a weather station on another planet. That will tell us a lot about how, how livable the planet is, how easily it would be to set up colonies there for, for future expansion of the Kerbal species. So let's begin planning that maneuver. All right, our course is planned, and we are in position to begin the first interplanetary travel in 300 years. Engaging engines. Engines responding full. Structural stability seems sound. S the gyroscopes are correctly, are correctly compensating for any shift we might have due to imbalance in mass, in mass distribution, everything appears to be going nominally. And slowly. Uh, what's our battery looking like? Okay, the battery's going down pretty fast. We might have to turn off the ion engines when that gets low, because one engine always stays on. 
it gets the charge first. Anything left, anything le left over, is distributed amongst the other three engines. And if there isn't enough, some engines don't go on. And that means that I have more thrust on one side of the craft than on the other, and that's just not a good thing to be doing. So as soon as this gets low, ooh, whoa, that was a fancy view. I'll press this hotkey to disable all four engines at all four ion engines at the same time. We'll leave the Nerva engine on, of course, and that's about as low as I want to go on that. I'll get back to you when this burn is over. This is going to be a long one. See you then. Here's a fun little tip, kids at home. The uh, new maneuver system is a lying bastard. You see here it's still got 44.2 meters per second of delta V to go. Well, I was following that cursor very carefully throughout the entire burn, the entire 15 minute burn, and a few moments ago the delta V remaining went up. It was at 44.1, then it went up to 44.2. So I know something's up. I come out to the map view and see this. This is my trajectory. This is my maneuver planned trajectory. You'll note that I've overshot it. I've burned too long and the maneuver system didn't even tell me this. I think that might need some work. I think it might need a bit of sense to it. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to remove this lying bastard of a node and zoom back out, see if that did anything to us. Okay, closest approach isn't even a thing. I am going to begin a retro burn. So let's flip around, RCS on so that we can flip fast. Oh, frame rate is chugging. I'm getting like, I'm getting 12, 13 frames per second. This is a very large ship. I might have to lower my graphical settings later on. Especially with the RCS, that's a lot of that's a lot of math to do. I think a lot of math to do very quickly. And oh, well, without the RCS, I can't even kind of steer this thing. It's such a big craft. D design suggestions are welcome. If anyone has an idea how I can do this better, please tell me because this is kind of wonky. Okay, now let's open that up and let's do this the old-fashioned way. Let's begin our burn. And that's better. Sometimes the old-fashioned way really is the best. That did use up a lot of fuel. We're pretty low now, but that doesn't matter. We've got a lot of xenon gas left. We can go where we like. It'll just take a while. But we've got our intercept course for Duna. And let's get going, shall not we? And we just did enter Duna's space. Now we need to figure out how to slow down. We don't, we don't want to slow down completely. We have other plans, but we want to be able to come very, very close to the atmosphere. So let's begin turning to a retrograde, I think. That should do us best. Well, actually, no, let's, let's do something interesting. Let's burn. Okay, if that's that way, let's go this way. I'm going on a hunch here. This might not be right, but I'm thinking that if I burn essentially perpendicular to my, um, to my trajectory, then I'll move closer to Duna at the end of it. That might be wrong, but I have fuel to spare. Let's see if this works. Okay, yeah, that's dropping it much more rapidly than, uh, than a simple retrograde burn would. So let's bring that in pretty close, just above the atmosphere. The atmosphere of Duna is what, 40? Okay, so there's that. Eh, I want a bit of error bar, so let's back out a bit on that. 66. Let's go to 65. 3, 4, 5. Okay, we're 
I'm not sure what's going on, but we seem to be accelerating for a bit longer than I think we ought to be. Uh, oh, I'm being too picky. Let's get on with it. On further examination of this scenario, I have decided to alter the flight plan. We're going to put ourselves on a trajectory that would enter the Duna atmosphere, and then back out of it after, after detaching the probe. The probe doesn't really have enough guts I've found to, uh, to perform the maneuver itself. So let's bring that back up, get up there, and do this. Is that working? Slowly? Very slowly. New plan. Worst plan. We're going to charge full on into the atmosphere. I tried the other thing, I missed, uh, quick loaded, and we're doing this now. We're going all the way into the atmosphere. Now, this main ship has no parachutes. The Horizon Walker has no parachutes. However, the probe does. So I'm going to really, really hope that the probe will stop and the, uh, and the Horizon Walker will not. The Horizon Walker will just skip on out of the atmosphere and keep on its merry way while the probe comes down to Duna and starts doing science. Oof! Oh, that was a... that was a mistake. Well, let's begin slowing down as fast as we can. It isn't very fast. I'm kind of worried now. I, this craft took me all of yesterday to put together, and a bit of today to put together, actually. But I might just burn it up in one really stupid idea, which makes me sad, really. Oh, is that police or an ambulance or what? I don't know. The alarming tone is appropriate, I suppose. Barometer. There's an atmosphere here. Accelerometer. We're undergoing a bit under 1G of deceleration. Let's check back with the Horizon Walker. Horizon Walker is doing fine, thank you very much. That's very good news to know. Let's carry on slowing down. Well, okay, we have an orbit. We are, we are now captured by Duna, our probe is at least. So if this doesn't work, the next thing will. It, almost certainly, it would have to. Now, let's try this again. We're on our second pass around. We just did enter a Duna atmosphere and we are just now about to begin slowing down via RCS again. I am a bit worried about the impact on this because my main stopping force is going to be from parachutes and of course parachutes don't work so well on Duna. So I'm going to do everything I can to slow down before the parachutes deploy. Everything I can in this case being very very little. Oh, there go the parachutes. So we should now be entering the final stages of our descent. Once this figures itself out, I'll begin using RCS to slow us down in whatever orientation the parachutes decide to leave us. Oh, flipping around. This is being very unstable. My parachutes don't appear to be quite agreeing with the center of mass for the vehicle. Anyways, let's just begin doing whatever we can to I think this is, this, maybe, this looks right, I don't know, are we, go oh, okay, there the parachutes are, parachutes have fully deployed, RCS is doing strange things to us, so let's watch as we fall the last few hundred meters 
to the service below. Oh, we're landing just as Ike is setting or rising. Anyways, we've landed in the uh, southern ice cap. So temperature readings will probably be below normal. But we can deposit another one of these elsewhere on Duna later for comparison. And we've landed. OK. Let's roll round. On second thought, let's not roll round. And OK, there we are. Let's take some readings. Negative 31.86 degrees. 0.3 G of acceleration. Pressure is 0 0.0735 somethings. The unit of measure wasn't given. And Gravioli readings suggest a downward acceleration of 2.89 meters per second per second. This is a lot of very valuable data. This will help a lot when building future colonies. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm tired. Let's leave bringing home Horizon Walker for next time, but let's take one last look at her before we leave. Switch over. Loading, 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 loaded. Ah, yes. I hope this works. I really have high hopes for this, for this series, this series of missions. It's a really romantic idea, sort of, this sort of Star Trek-y five-year mission thing. I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if this really has enough guts to it to work. It might just be too big, because right now my frame rate is gutted. This, this craft is just too big. But I'll find a way to make it work somehow, and I'll take you along for the ride. I will see you next time.